everybody. Welcome to the Archives Committee. Um, I, I'm very conscious that we have a lot of new members on the Archives Committee. Uh, so first of all, uh, welcome to the old members, but uh, particularly warm welcome to the new members. And uh, I hope you find the Archives Committee very interesting and rewarding. It is a very interesting committee and it plays a very important role in our civic and local life. So I do hope that you, you get a lot from it. Um, but I, I'm also very conscious <clears throat> that because there are some new members, uh, also perhaps some of the Neath but Talbot councillors in particular may well be new councillors anyway. So maybe just take a minute just to just to say who, who you are, because we've also got uh, members of uh, or representatives of associated organisations as well. And I think if you're new, new to the committee, it would be nice for, for everybody just to see who they are. So um, would I, it'll only take a couple of minutes. So uh, if I could start off as on my screen, I can see um, uh, Lyndon. Just... Uh, good, good morning, everyone. I'm L Lyndon Jones, councillor in Bishopston in, uh, on, on Swansea Council. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Louise, Louise Miskell. Hi, nice to meet all new members. Uh, I'm Louise Miskell. I'm the Swansea University representative on the Archives Committee. Thank you. Uh, Nia? Duane and the cabinet member for education, uh, skills, training. OK, you're a uh, little bit of uh, broadband issues there, I think. But thank you. Thank you, Nia. Uh, next on my screen is Peter. Peter Black. Good morning. I'm Swansea Councillor for Cumbulla and a former member of the Archives Committee. Ridian, next on my screen. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Returning uh, member, I specifically asked should we be kept on this because, uh, as you say, Louise, it is very interesting. So, yeah. hello again, everyone. Yeah, good to see you back, Riddy, and thank you. Um, Elliot? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Elliot. I'm uh, the Cabinet Member for Culture and Equalities in Swansea. Thank you. Next on my screen is Wayne. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Wayne John. I'm the County Librarian for Neath the Talbot. Thank you. Uh, next on my screen is is Jeremy. Jeremy. Hello. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Hurley. Yeah. So I cover uh, Kim Learn Planner as a councillor for NPT. Um, really glad I've been asked to go on the committee. Um, very interested and appreciate all the great work you've done. I've also got a visit after this now in Neath Mechanics Institute, so looking forward to that as well. So thanks for asking me to go on. Thank you. Oh, ex excellent. Um, that's all I can see on the screen, so I'll go uh, onto my list. Uh, Suzanne? Hi there, I'm uh, Councillor Suzanne Wenkers. I'm uh, a councillor for Baglan Ward in Neath Portalbert. Uh, I'm looking forward to this committee too. Thank you. Uh, Wayne? Sorry, Louise, I think you've al I've already done my... Oh, piece. sorry, sorry. Oh, the other Wayne. Oh, yeah. yeah, Wayne Carpenter, sorry, yes. We've had apologies from Councillor Carpenter. Oh, OK, right, thank you. Um, uh, Jess. Oh, hiya, uh, my name's Jess Pritchard. I'm the councillor for Manage Bark in Swansea. Thank you, Jess. Robert? Uh, apologies from Councillor Smith as well. Right, OK. Um, and then we have Sarah, Sarah Perrons. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Perrons. I'm the um, representative for the Diocese of Llanda. And um, apologies this morning because I've got connection issues, so I may disappear off the screen. I'm having to go on my phone at the moment. Yeah, no, that's fine. As long as we can yeah. hear you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Andrew. Andrew Dully. Uh, apologies, Andrew Dully. Chair. Yeah, apologies. Apologies. Sorry. OK, uh, Janet, Janet Watkins. No apologies as well. Chair. OK, right. And then officers, um, Craig. Uh, good, good morning all, I'm Craig Griffiths. I'm the Council's Head of Legal and Democratic Services and the Archives Committee and the Archives Functions rest within my area of work, so good morning. Thank, thank you, Craig. And uh, Kim? I'm Kim Collis. I'm the County Archivist for West Morgan Archive Service. Thank you. Now, have I missed anybody? Anybody? Oh, Trace, Tracy, I can see you in a little circle. Tracy, you're here. Good morning all. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Tracy McNulty, I'm Head of Cultural Services for Swansea Council. Right, thank you very we, much. We've Tracy. done earlier, yes. 
Jackson. Yes. And, and Jeff, Jeff Bacon. Hi, I'm Jeff Bacon. I'm head of property services for Swansea Council here today just to um, assist and update with regards to um, uh, the new scheme in Swansea City Centre and relocation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, right. Have, have I missed anybody? No? OK. Thank, thank you all for that. Um, it's much easier to do these things in a proper meeting, isn't it? So thank you for bearing with me. Right. The um, uh, formally, Gareth, can we have the apologies for absence, please? Yes, of course, Chair, from <coughs> Councillors, excuse me, Robert Smith, uh, Wayne Carpenter, and then Andrew Daly and Dan Watkins. Thank you very much. Uh, second item, are there any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interest, please? None? Good. Thank you very much. The next item uh, is the minutes of the last meeting. And um, can I please have your approval that they are an accurate record of the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 11th of March, for those who were present? Happy to move, Chair. Thank you, Ridian. And second, Lyndon. Thank you very much. Um, next item is the report of the County Archivist. Kim, would you like to take over now, please? Good morning, members. Um, so I think you've all had uh, access to the uh, uh, my quarterly report this month. Uh, so I'm going to refer to it section by section. Um, if we look on page five, you'll see the first point to, that I've mentioned is that the Neath uh, Mechanics Institute, the service point there, reopened on the 25th of April. Um, we're just having a limited service on Mondays only, um, and uh, it's primarily designed to provide access to the archive collections of the Neath Antiquarian Society. Um, but we are also providing a family history service on that day. Um, as I mentioned in the report, there is an issue with the broadband uh, there. Um, during the lockdown period, it was uh, we had a new upgraded router, which we didn't realise uh, the cable, the fibre cable to the Mechanics Institute was not capable of supporting. So. What's happened is, although we have a telephone connection there, we haven't got a broadband connection. Um, we're currently trying to sort this out and uh, reach the point at which we're looking to for a new provider there because um, the company which we're currently with, which I won't mention to embarrass them, but uh, has not managed to um, uh, sort out the situation. So we're looking at moving to BT instead and that should happen in the next couple of weeks, in which case we will be able to provide that family history service that is uh, a key part of what we what we do in Neath. Um, should be said, Neath Antiquarian Society are providing a service for its members, uh, but also they've been hampered by the fact there's been no no broadband connection in uh, in that building, so uh, it's been rather limited, but actually the service use is still very small. It kind of goes back to, I think, uh, what we might call COVID anxiety, uh, that the, a lot of uh, customers are still very hesitant about uh, um, going, visiting public spaces and so on. Although, you know, it has been, the, the area has been uh, modified to allow for physical separation and so on. Um, uh, and it's uh, it's operating under a strict risk assessment, COVID risk assessment, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll, we've had a huge influx of users coming back. Um, as is customary, I'll, I'll stop here. If anybody wants to, to raise any issues around the Neath service point, uh, Councillor Hurley, I, uh, I understand you're going there. Did you say later today? Uh, yes, I am. I got a meeting with them at Tapas Eleven. So I'll, I'll again, I'll ask them if they want this to advertise the fact that they're back open, or do they just want to let it sort of build up quietly? So mm. I'll, I'll speak to them and uh, update you then. Thank you. Yeah, you you can reassure them. Uh, I think the message got through, but that that we are changing provider. Um, I think 
I'm not sure that they'd be aware that the BT said it would take two to three weeks for uh, to to switch provider, but hopefully we'll get better service from them and be back up and running uh, fully with a full broadband uh, service in in the next couple of weeks. Good, thank you. Section two relates to the uh, use of the service and I provided the statistics for March to May, uh, not forgetting, of course, that this is the uh, reporting period that we're talking about. The, the meeting, this meeting, which normally takes place in June, has been postponed for uh, uh, reasons that I'm sure members are aware. Um, we had 344 users in Swansea during that period and 20 in Neath uh, during April and May. Uh, of course, we're only open for a very small part of April um, uh, uh, opened on the 25th in, in Neath. So um, user figures are still very low uh, and even in Swansea, they, <clears throat> they are increasing. And as you'll see, when you uh, compare the figure of 344 in Swansea in um, uh, this year and you compare it to 63 in the equivalent quarter last year, you can see that um, it, they have increased. Obviously, there were, uh, can't quite remember March to May, but I think we had lockdown certainly for the first part of that, and we were close to the public. So, um, yeah, it's not not surprising that the figures are increased, but we're still not back to where we normally would be in terms of uh, a quarter. So we'd be probably pre-COVID. We'd probably be looking at figures that were closer to a thousand than um, you know. Uh, Three three hundred and forty-four, but uh, um, primarily the users that uh, we have are using the archive collections rather than coming back. The the thing that's really suffered is the family history centre, and we're just not getting the family historians back. And this might be down to a number of factors: um, COVID anxiety, which I've mentioned. Also, that I think probably during lockdown, a lot of um, family historians have probably learnt to um, do their family history from home. Uh, a lot of people probably taken up subscriptions to the online websites, and uh, so uh, are, are learning to to um, uh, research their family history online from home. So, you know, it may be that um, the fact that so many of our records are now available online on the family history websites, this is really um, uh, beginning to hit the figures for family historians because um, uh, people uh, with subscriptions being the, the price that they are, people people think it's more reasonable to uh, to be able to, to use uh, uh, the websites from home. Also, they can access them for free in any, any library in Swansea or Neath Patalba as well. Um, I should just mention that the annual figures, which I could actually have put in the report, but I forgot to do that, but uh, they're rehearsed in the annual report, which came out during the, per the period, uh, just actually just outside the report. I think it was the 2nd of June, if I remember right. And that's been published on our website. It's a roundup of the year's activities together with a number of local history art articles written by the archive staff and by uh, guest um, uh, guest authors, one from the Neath Antiquarian Society and uh, a couple from, from Swansea, including uh, former councillor Johan Richard, who I think is probably well known to, at least to the Swansea members, uh, writing about the Maurer community. Um, and together with a complete list of everything that we received during the year. Uh, what I'll do afterward, after the meeting is I'll uh, provide the URL link to Gareth to circulate to so you can have a, <laughs> he's already put it up there. Um, sorry, I for, for, forgot that in the report, although technically it didn't go till June, so I could sl uh, slip through. The, the fact that it uh, it was uh, published in early June, slightly outside the reporting uh, thing, but it does refer back to the, the last year. You'll see that our figures for 2021-22 were somewhere around about 700. I think it was just a smidgen under 
700 users. So it was fairly poor compared to pre-COVID figures of round about um, um, just under 4,000 for the last year before uh, the um, pandemic. So, you know, we're, our figures are still very, very low. Um, I'll stop again if any member wants to ask questions about section two. If, in which case I'll move on to section three, the National Broadcast Archive. Uh, this is an, an initiative by the National Library of Wales to provide access to um, historic TV programmes, which they hold the original tapes for and which are being digitised with a Heritage Lottery grant. Um, the companies involved are uh, BBC, ITV Wales and S4C. And the uh, the archive, uh, which is being digitised, will mean that um, users will be able to view programmes from from that archive across a wide range of um, uh, wide uh, time period uh, range. So going back to, uh, in many cases, presume with S4C, for example, right back to the start of the uh, the channel. Um, and with BBC I'm, I'm not and ITV, I'm not sure how far back, but the um, for rights reasons, the uh, um, uh, the the programs can only be viewed on national library territory. So um, the project involves creating a clip center in the, one of the reading rooms in the National Library of Wales and a series of clip corners across Wales in virtually every local authority archive and one or two libraries across Wales. Um, where uh, the National Library has taken a nominal lease on a small area within those uh, institutions. And um, so for those for that reason, it's able to uh, make the programmes available on demand uh, in that space. And what we've done is we've converted a section of the Family History Centre into the uh, clip corner. Um, it's just been refurbished, re, uh, repainted to to go in the clip corner branding, so it can accept National Library of Wales branding, and we should have very shortly two terminals where you'll be able to um, uh, view the uh, TV archive together with a large screen for group use, where people can pin favorite programs and other things. So um, essentially it's a, a little bit of the National Library in Swansea um, and we should open in September. The project's been subject to some delay. It was due to open in the beginning of July um, and it's been pushed back to September and the CLIP Centre itself in Aberystwyth will open in October. Um, but there's some um, uh, a fair fair amount of slippage on the uh, project due to COVID, basically to the pandemic, because this has been ongoing, an ongoing project uh, right through the period of uh, lockdowns and so on. So it's not uh, it's not uh, following the original plan, which would would have meant that it was going to open on the first of July. Um, so. Uh, there will be more um, information about that in uh, future meetings when it, it does open, but it is quite a, an exciting development. Obviously, we don't know how popular it's going to be. Um, and I, my uh, experience of seeing similar uh, resources in some of the major libraries, so if you go up to Manchester Library, for example, you'll see the Granada TV archive is uh, available there. Um, you, uh, Birmingham Library, I think, also has similar access to some of its uh, local um, TV um, archive. Um, it's it, it's it's one of those things where, it, with proper publicity and uh, also community involvement, it could be could be very popular. Uh, we wait to see. I think. Um, 
Uh, I think one of the things I'm really happy with is that we, Swansea is one of the first places, will be one of the first clip corners to open, uh, along with Carmarthen, um, and it's going to be closely followed by uh, Merthyr Library. There'll be a clip corner in the uh, Millennium Centre in uh, the Wales Millennium Centre in Cardiff Bay, uh, and also ultimately in Glamorgan Archives. But we're we're in the the vanguard with regard to this. So um, we're um, also involved with the um, uh, um, the outreach officer who's trying to get um, community groups across Swansea and East Patalbert involved in the process of uh, helping to um, uh, index and um, flag up programmes that are of local interest. So, for example, if there were documentaries on the Delice Valley, for example, or, or um, uh, uh, aspects of Gower or something like that, so that we can uh, we can tag those programmes and and flag them up for uh, interest to to local historians, because currently it's uh, you know just a bland catalogue of digitised programmes, but obviously that can be resource can be mined and people can um, uh, can flag up programs that, that would, could be of interest and that they found interesting and so on. Uh, I'll stop again if any member wishes to ask any questions about this. Uh, Louise. Uh, Kim, uh, very interesting to um, that this is now almost uh, almost with it. When you mentioned the community outreach worker, Will it be possible, because I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, does one have to actually go into the clip corner to access the, the programmes <clears throat> or or can they be copied and um, broadcast in community venues? Because we do have a lot of community facilities. I recently visited a, a few in these Patovas and they have their own cinemas. And I'm thinking that if there's a, uh, say, a documentary which is of particular interest or indeed any programme, could that then be streamed at a local uh, community cinema? Mm, or do yeah. you have to go actually into the um, in, into the clip corner to view the programme that you want to see? Yeah, unfortunately, it's it relates to the rights thing. So basically, for rights reasons, the, the programs can only only be viewed on um, national library territory, which is why we've got this um, um, nominal lease of uh, I think it's a square meter in the archives public area to to the national library, which has been arranged by our legal department. However, I think there is a um, clause which allows for special use so it might be special showings on other in other venues so it's something i can investigate with the national library team uh to see whether it, it would be possible but that would be like single so it's not accessing the catalog and so and so on however i think for example if let's take the delice valley as an example uh, if there was a program that uh, that was um uh, relating to that valley and that was thought to be uh, that they could have special showing in you know seven sisters or something like that then uh, maybe uh, uh, I'll need to investigate but it may mm. be possible for uh, um, a special license to be obtained yeah but but basically because of rights issues there'll only be certain um, uh, certain venues where the uh, the clip corners can uh, yes. uh, people can access the um, the programs through the clip corners. Yes, that would be useful to to find out. I think Ken, because a lot yeah. of these community venues are actually in communities which are really quite isolated in terms of public transport, and the reason why they have them is is so that people can access uh, things like um, you know cinemas or films or whatever locally so um, it would be I'm sure if they knew about it and it was possible then it would be an enhancement to the, the kind of things that they can offer to the local community. Thank sure you. yes I'll report back to the next meeting um, I actually uh, attend the uh, the project board as the representative of the clip corners um, 
the meetings all take place via Zoom, so it's uh, not not very much. It's uh, it's just uh, once a month, less an hour. But um, I can certainly raise that with either with the um, uh, the project. Uh, sorry, I said project board. It's the uh, National Library Projects team. The board is mm -hmm. uh, different. Uh, I think. But, uh, so. Um, Yes, the uh, I could either ask that of the project team or, or else uh, when the outreach officer uh, contacts me um, uh, about that. But because of the time slippage, we we did start. Um, I think he sent an email to the Neath Talbot Heritage Group. Uh, I don't know what response has been, but of course, until it's in place, I think that a lot of volunteers will probably uh, be a little bit hesitant about coming forward because we don't really know what it is yet. I think it's easier to see see something and then say would you like to get involved but w when it's just a concept i think it's uh you might be able to say that sounds really interesting and quite like to get involved but i don't think anybody would commit to it thank you kim uh perhaps uh, now that we are starting to to meet um in in person perhaps it'd be useful to have a demonstration the committee would like a demonstration of it or um so that we know exactly what it what it is yeah, be able to I'll, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, see whether it's practical to uh, uh, to, to to do that. I think at the the bottom line is that um, those members who do attend the Guild Hall for the next meeting, I think the next meeting's in in the Swansea Guild, Guild Hall, and wish to come over to Civic Centre, could certainly show them the area. Uh, if I can manage to do it remotely, that would be good. But I'm uh, not sure whether. Uh, I've, got, I've got the technical capacity to actually uh, to do that, so it may be a matter of uh, if you'd like to come over to Civic Centre yeah. and, and see the um, the thing in operation, then uh, you'd be welcome uh, to to do that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So it's only yes. two months till the next meeting, and of yeah. course, it will only just have opened. Mm -hmm. If indeed, if there's further slippage, it might still be awaiting its opening, but it's due to open in September. Yeah, I was thinking of a, a physical visit as opposed to, uh, you know, a, a Zoom one. But, uh, yes. but leave it with with you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure the several committee members would uh, would would like to, to to have that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there are no further questions, we'll move on to the next uh, section, which is the probably the substantive part of the meeting, which relates to the relocation of the archives. Um, Jeff Bacon, head of property services, uh, is attending, and he'll no doubt speak after the uh, uh, after I've been through my uh, report. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, share a screen with you to explain what the uh, uh, the physical um, uh, aspects of the um, uh, the archive and also um, some of the um, uh, the issues round round that, um, but just going back to the report. So what uh, what has happened? So on July the first, the project passed Reba Stage Three, which is about spatial coordination, and we're then looking. Uh, Reba Stage Four is about the technical and mechanical. Probably got that wrong. Jeff will correct me if I'm wrong. Well, but technical, technical and mechanical aspects of the project. So I'm going to talk about the REAP stage three thing which has been signed off and then go on to the what the challenges are with REAP stage four. So I'm going to share my screen hopefully successfully. Uh, I'm hoping that you can now see on screen the uh, a floor plan. Uh, I can't tell whether you can see that because it, that now occupies the whole of my screen. Uh, can could somebody just confirm that that's showing OK? Yep, see that. Uh, yeah, oh. we can because we can. Um, I can only see it uh, as a small. Um, oh, section. Right. If, yes, so if it could be enlarged, I don't know if others can see the whole screen, but mine is only a small section. Uh, right, OK, I'll unshare from it. Sorry, is that is that the case with other people that it's showing only as small? Yeah, OK, um, let's just. See whether I can enlarge it. I think that might be the. Well, unless I open the wrong. Um, 
Is that that's still showing us small? Yes, that's right, Ken. It's, it's getting bigger. Whatever you're okay. doing, keep, keep doing <laughs> the same. It. It's getting larger and larger. It's now larger than the whole of my screen, actually. So uh, <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Well, that's getting larger. We can only see part of it now, so so perhaps um, a little bit smaller. Yes. Can you? Uh, will you say stop when? Right. So basically, you need to be looking at this square. So could you tell me when that's the appropriate size for you? Yes. Uh, we well, we can we can see that square, and if you want to, if you want to expand that so we can see it a little bit more, then that would be fine. Okay. So that that's occupying the whole of my screen. So uh, I, I think I'll stop there as long as you can read the writing or half read the writing. Hopefully, is that is that the case? It looks fine. Uh, yes, that's fine. Right. Thank you. Okay, so the, uh, the archive search room. The this is a plan of the archive search room. Um, the location of the search room is dictated by the location of the archive strong room with which there'll be a plan later on because the the two areas need to be connected by a document lift um, for those members who know our current facilities in Swansea Civic Centre you'll be aware that there's a document lift connecting the basement strong room with the uh, ground floor search room uh, I should just say at this point if any new members want to have a a tour of the uh, current archives. You're very welcome uh, to, um, uh, uh, to 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 have a tour around, which I'm very happy to give. Um, perhaps we could all coordinate that through Gareth after the meeting, if uh, if new members to the committee haven't seen the collections. Um, certainly, I think those those of you who have seen uh, uh been on that tour probably very interested uh by uh some of the so shall we say the crown jewels of the collection such as um the um uh abbey charters uh, one of which is shortly to to reach its um 900th birthday that's our oldest documents uh, 900 years old almost give minus seven years um, and also um, the, uh, the the UNESCO inscribed collection of the Neath Abbey Ironworks, which is uh, uh, a unique uh, collection within the UK, and uh, as such, it was recognised by UNESCO as as being of national importance within the UK. So that's the ar archive strong room, which we'll go on to later with that here. But we're now looking at the public facilities. So the key uh, issue around the um, uh, the design of the search room, firstly, as I mentioned, is that they, it has a document lift to communicate with the um, the archive store, the the strong room, and the document lift is there, and it's behind the staff area, which the staff area um, is capable of being staffed by two people, one person to oversee the reception and one person to oversee the search room. Uh, this is the archive search room. Um, the key issues around the, um, the design of the search room um, is that the, um, the primary concern is the lines of sight with regard to the the use of documents, and that's uh, uh, been the most important consideration. That there should be good lines of sight for uh, uh, the archivist on duty to be able to to see uh, that the um, the documents are being used uh, according to certain regulations. Um, so as you'll see, there's a good line of sight down the centre table there, and then across to a table for uh, oversized documents, maps basically, um, which uh, uh, can therefore only seat two people because um, it's um, this is designed so that the um, uh, 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 the whole space can be occupied by large maps. Indeed. Some of our maps are too large to fit on the 
that table, um, but it 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 will hold most most of our collections. Um, and uh, as, uh, the third consideration is that there should be access to the microfilm which we hold, which is two microfilm cabinets and a microfilm reader printer there. Um, and uh, additionally, there is access to the film and sound archive here because we have a fair film and sound archive of our own and um, uh, the archive catalogue, uh, accessing the archive catalogue and then we've got one PC for family history resources which will not be available in the local studies library next door. Um, there is a uh, ante room here um, uh, or reception area where um, there is a lockable coat rack and lockers for um, uh, readers to stow their bags and personal belongings before they go into the archive search room. And there's a security gate, which is um, uh, there's a button behind it or will be a button behind the desk so that staff can activate that. So staff going uh, customers going in and out uh, have to uh, be um, buzz through the security gate. So it basically means that um, uh, the archivist can check that all documents that have been issued to that particular customer um, during the, the time that they've been there have been returned. And there is storage space for uh, documents awaiting um, um, uh, issue uh, uh, in, in this area here. Uh, there's space for a, a photocopier and a scanner here. Um, and there is a small shop. Um, what you may uh, realize uh, from this um, uh, plan is that there is uh, we've lost the Family History Center. Um, and the Family History Center essentially is transferred to the local studies library. Um, so we, we will not offer the same sort of service for family historians that we had before. We've got one PC um, and we haven't got any space for the clip corner that I've been describing in section three of the um, uh, uh, my report. So that will also have to be located elsewhere outside the archive. Um, the other thing to say is the, the the search room seating is is half the current capacity of the archive search room. So we currently uh, seat 20 people uh, in the archive search room. Um, that's gone down to 10 uh, with one PC for accessing catalog, accessing the catalog. I mean, overall, our seating capacity is uh, will, will be reduced from uh, 36 if we include the clip corner down to um, uh, 14 here so it's some, somewhere in, in between uh, a third and a half of our current usage and that will have a knock-on effect on usage of the service. Um, it has to be said that this is a multi-use building and that we've um, you know, uh, there are many other services that are going to be located in the building that I think members need to be aware that the figures for usage of the service will reflect the fact that the the capacity of the area has been reduced. And in, in particular, the uh, our service to family historians will not be provided by us, but by the, the local studies library and indeed the figures for the clip corner if um, if it takes off will also not necessarily be part of our statistics. So it will be a smaller service and members need to be aware of that because it's not uh, 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 it's not something that um, we're able to uh, to adjust at this stage when we've passed Reba stage three. You know, this is a multi-use building. The archives are part of a uh, uh, a number of uh, agencies and uh, council services which are available in the building and this is the best 
that um, we've been able to manage and it's also uh, this primary consideration is that, that it should meet the security requirements which are part of the security risk assessment which uh, in turn informs the um, accreditation of the service. So um, it's it might you might describe it as small but perfectly formed it's it's the best that I can see best use of the space that's been made available however it is small um, if I go on to my next slide which uh, I don't know what size that's showing us whether it's readable or not yes it's fine Kim thank you right um, um this this shows basically the size of the service in comparison to other local authority archives across wales and um has to be said that um we have been the uh the, before covid we were one of the busiest archive services in wales in fact we were the busiest um uh, but um our seat the, the reduced seating will mean that we'll be kind of knocked down to the uh the lower rungs of the um uh provision by uh uh local authorities across wales so this will be amongst the smallest of the um local authority archive facilities across wales wales and as you can see it's roughly in comparable to the services provided by flintshire and uh Denbyshire. um the there are 13 ar local authority archives across across Wales, but and these the source of this is the SIP for stats for 2018-19. Um, not all local authorities contributed to those SIP for stats, so I don't have the full things, but the ones that are missing are uh, also this sort of size. So the new facility is roughly the same size as the facility in Carmarthen, uh, slightly smaller than Halford West, slightly slightly bigger probably than Flandre and Dodd Wells, uh, but it's certainly uh, on that kind of scale, which is one of the reasons that I would say that the it is important that members should be aware that a feasibility study will be undertaken to, uh, to see whether there is a better solution for the archives going forward, because certainly this is not a uh, a public facility which will allow us to grow the service across the next 25 years. It it will uh, it will serve its function and it will provide the statutory access to records that uh, is part of the archive provision across uh, across the UK. Uh, however, it's not it's not a facility which will allow the service to grow. And I think one of the things that I'm particularly aware of uh, for um, uh, uh, future developments of the service that it's um, we have to try to work out how we can continue with uh, school and uh, local history group visits to, to use the archives because um, basically our, our group size is limited by the um, the seating that we have so we have 10 10 seats which is you know not the size of a uh, school classroom and so on it has to be said that all the, all those services have been not for six by the pandemic so we know we haven't had any school visits since before covid struck and we haven't had any local history group visits and so on but they are beginning to start again but we just don't know what the level of demand will be or what uh, uh, things but certainly over the period of you know the lifetime of the building uh 25 years this is a small small service if you compare it you know to cardiff which can seat 40 with 19 computers gwent 43 people uh gwynedd uh 50 in in two branches admittedly but the uh, uh certainly the archives of wales split into uh two tiers and we sort of drop down to the the, the tier below in terms of the the, the facilities that we offer uh, I'm afraid I can't see if any lights are on, so I'm going to go on to, I'll finish my next, uh, uh, lo looking at the different images and then we'll take comments and questions afterwards. 
So we're going to go on to the archive strong room. Now, once again, I'm going to have to ask whether this needs to be increased in size or decreased in size. I think it's fine, uh, Kim. It can, we can see it or I, I can see it. So I hope everybody can as well. So the archive strong room is located on the second floor, the top floor of the building. And we've got the document lift that I showed you in the slide before last situated there. So that determines the uh, the the search room and strong room need to relate to each other with the use of uh, uh, a document lift because there is otherwise we would be um, um, uh, taking records through public areas there there is a route for oversized documents but um, the vast majority of our records should be um, transferable from search room to strong room via the document lift um, now the it has to be said that the um, the archive strong room is somewhat experimental in terms of uh, the um, how it's been designed and the thing that's experimental is what you'll see on the plan is this um, uh, the engineer refers to it as a plenum or I prefer to refer to it as a buffer zone because uh, it's more uh, more recognizable what it is but basically uh, the um, archive firm uh, strong room situated on the top floor will be subject to heat loss and heat gain from a from any other part of the building with which it has contact obviously being separated uh, uh, situated on the the second floor it's just under the roof so therefore it's subject to solar gain and solar loss through the um, uh, um, uh, radiation from the the roof. It's also subject to heat gain and heat loss through the um, the floor with which it's directly in con contact the con concrete slab and in particular the comfort heating for the rest of the building. Um, and it will also be um, um, uh, subject to the uh, 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 lateral heat gain and loss through the other uh, parts of the um, second floor. So the solution that's been arrived at is this um, buffer zone, which which air will be circulated around. It's a little bit, probably a little bit oversimplistic, but I think it's quite possible to compare it to a fridge. Um, so you're not actually heating or cooling the inside of the fridge. Um, but you're um, uh, controlling the airflow round the um, cavity, round the uh, the archive strong room area, and and that should, um, on the modelling, provide a, a strong room environment which is um, within British standard four nine seven one, which I'll just refer to my notes to go through what that is. Um, so under British standard 4971, the temperature is allowed to pivot between 13 degrees minimum temperature and 23 degrees, obviously these are centigrade, um, uh, minimum and maximum temperatures. Um, however, the annual average temperature should be less than 18 degrees C. Furthermore, the temperature change should be any temperature change should be stable, so it should not be more than one degree C in any 24 hours. Um, now, a lot of that uh, will depend on the air tightness and the insulation of the, the strong room area, so it's being um, built to a high spec, which will make it airtight and um, also heavily insulated although the concrete slab underneath on the floor uh, uh, is, is is an issue um, but the um, the key thing 
to to know whether it's going to be possible to uh, transfer the collections over it relates to the air tightness of the um the area because what this is relying on is thermal inertia so it's if it's properly sealed and it's properly airtight then the temperature and humidity within the area should remain stable um it should be mentioned that Carmarthenshire, uh, I don't think this is classified information, but uh, the delay of, it seems almost like a two years of uh, for, before Carmarthenshire transferred the collections and reopened, it just opened very recently, has been down to air tightness issues and it had a leak uh, when they kept testing the air tightness of the um, um, uh, of the strong room. So it's important to be aware that um, the uh, getting it right and making sure that the um, the storage area is airtight is going to be a key thing about whether the collections can be transferred there or not. And I do hope we don't get into the same situation that Carmarthenshire had because I don't think we have a, a couple of years to um, to wait for um, the um, airtight airtightness to be sorted. But uh, testing of that will be overseen in collaboration with the external advisor that we're using, who I've mentioned in previous uh, in previous meetings. That's the uh, Chris Woods from the National Conservation Service. Um, should all that be um, um, successful, then the Re what what our external advisor is saying is that the the relative humidity of the uh, the storage collection should stabilize because the majority of the moisture that will be contained within the area of bearing in mind this is <coughs> excuse me this is a, a dry area it's a, it's dry work it's a, um partition walls it's not um concrete um or a breeze block it should it uh, it should stabilize because the majority of the moisture will be um, uh, within the collection itself. Um, then the temperature will pivot depending on all these external factors that I've mentioned. That's you know uh, heat radiation, heat gain through the roof on hot days. Um, in winter, there'll be more heat coming in for, through the heating of the ground and first floors. Um, there will be so there will be various forces acting on the uh, on the strong room to pivot the, um, uh, uh, the temperature. So the, the temperature will fluctuate across the months. Now, the important thing is that the annual average is less than 18 degrees C. Uh, the current modelling has it at 17.89 degrees C, the annual average, so it's 0.11% of a degree centigrade um, um, uh, under the maximum annual average. So as you can see, it's uh, it's been modelled to conform to the code, but it's only just scraping in under the um, um, uh, the annual average. Um, furthermore, if we go on to the next slide, this is a slide of how the temperature has been modelled to uh, to vary um, across the year. So, uh, to, uh, bottom left to right is across the year, January to January, and then the uh, temperature, which I hope you can read, but you. Uh, the next to the bottom rung is 23 degrees, which is the um, uh, the, the maximum temperature. So the, the blue line is showing what happens if um, uh, uh, the um, we just rely on totally on thermal inertia, and the red line is the modified uh, temperature and uh, 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 fluctuation if we pump cold air around that buffer zone. So as you can see during the winter months, the um, uh, the the temperature is much with the modifications, i.e. the red line, it has a significant effect. 
uh, but when we get to July and August, it's having a minimum effect. And now th this relates to the fact that the uh, th this is a modification that I believe needs to be made. That the the um, the air that will be pumped into the buffer zone will be taken from the outside uh, outside air, which is fine in winter because obviously the um, temperature uh, of the air that you're pumping in is going to be fairly low. That air should be between 13 and 19 degrees. Uh, what happens when the air temperature outside, even at night, um, reaches 19 degrees, then the system stops and it doesn't pump any more air into the buffer zone. Um, I think the last week has uh, shown us that we can expect over the next uh, coming decades um, extreme heat events and uh, I think this is something that needs to be worked on. I'm really pleased that we on REBA stage four because these are the kind of issues that need to be uh, um, tackled at REBA stage four and further work will need to be done with modelling and I'm, I'm pleased to say Jeff, who's here today, has agreed that this this needs to be look at, looked at because the annual average is very close to the the maximum allowed, and the temperature is also very high. So I am concerned about these high high summer temperatures. Not not particularly about the the rest of the year, but if you look at the if you can read the writing, it's particularly in July and August, and the. August average is 21.36, is modelled at 21.36 degrees C, and as I've said, 23 is the absolute maximum. I mean, it should be said that the archive strong room as currently in Civic Centre is uh, based on the um, outdated British Standard 5454, which allowed for a temperature variation of 13 to 19 degrees. So if you have been on the strong room or you will probably have noticed that it was quite cold or cool. Um, to me, 23 degrees is uh, uh, too long in the tooth, really, because it has been accepted by the British standard that 23 degrees is acceptable, but 23 is, um, uh, for me, quite a high temperature. Um, uh, and uh, but I do accept that the British standard uh, has has altered, and and this is uh, acceptable. It's just that the the collections so far have uh, uh, been kept within the range 13, 13 to nineteen degrees. Um, the experts now agree that temperatures nineteen nineteen to twenty one do not cause any any damage to archive collections. However, sustained temperatures between 21 and 23 can cause damage, particularly to um, 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 some, some types of materials. If I go back to my previous slide, uh, one of the things that issues that we also have is that this area is, which is separated by steel mesh, will be um, uh, the um, South Wales Miners Library, miners' banners, and other archive material that they hold. So, our collections have been. The strong room will will hold a variety of um, materials, including textiles. Um, for the first time, we've we've not we've never previously collected textiles. We consider those to be museum artifacts. But the the uh, strong room area will. Um, have both archive material, which is mostly paper, some parchment, and uh, it will also, in, through the um, incorporation of the uh, South Wales Miners Library archive, um, it will also include textiles for the first time. So um, a certain amount of work needs to be undertaken at REAP stage four. I'm really pleased that we're at that stage, but I think a, a lot of um, uh, thought needs to be gone into about these um, uh, high high summer temperatures, which are, are, are currently a source of uh, concern to me. I think I'll stop at that stage. If I stop presenting, uh, perhaps I should hand, well, I don't know who's yeah. light went on uh, first, but so Jeff, I'll leave to chair. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you, Kim, for that very comprehensive uh, review of the new premises. Uh, two hands. Jeff was first and then Peter. Uh, 
thank you, Louise. I'm very conscious of time because I've only got to 11 o'clock in my diary for this meeting, but I can I can obviously stay for a for a bit longer. But um, just very quickly to um, not so much a response because obviously Kim and I and others have been working very closely together on this on this project. I don't want anyone to sort of leave this meeting thinking, oh, this is all doom and gloom. This is going to go disastrously wrong. And there's a lot of engagement with Kim, as I say. He's raised the points about um, um, temperature that he has a personal concern over. As he's rightly said, it's been designed and modelled within the um, within the guidance, but we've taken those concerns on board, and we can design um, uh, and and in, incorporate cooling into the um, into the void to make sure that those peak temperatures um, in in those sort of middle months um, aren't reached, which would give hopefully give sufficient comfort, and that's not a particularly difficult one to fix. Um, more generally, in terms of the, the the scheme itself, just to sort of um, for those who aren't aware, it's it's a critical scheme for um for the council and the wider region in terms of regeneration, not just of the civic centre site where we have to relocate um, West Morgan archives, but also the city centre and that um, the former British Homes doors and now the Miss Selfridge building that we've now bought in to make due to the fact we have significant demand from all, all manner of partner organisations to come into the building. The most important thing for us is to revitalise um, the city centre and to make sure we re revitalise it with various footfall generators, but to the um, to the specification and demands of those various users. And we have a lot of multiple users in this building. Clearly, there's some very specific um, demands and requirements in order to meet accreditation for the archive service, and we will not move the archive and the um, the collection unless we meet those accreditation demands. And we've said that throughout um, so that still remains the case and we've designed um, the building up to Reaper stage three to meet those needs and we'll continue to those designs up to Reaper stage four to ensure the technical elements are all right um, there's a lot with regards to the design of the actual running of the service that obviously is critical in terms of certification and accreditation they're outside um well outside my area of expertise but that's obviously for kim tracy and others to um to be clear on in terms of how the service is actually run Part of that is the amount of space that's been allocated. We've designed an allocated space based on what we were asked for, so it meets the needs of what we we're asked for for the service going forward. Evidently, though, if you have, say, 4,000 visitors a year to um, the archive service, that was pre-pandemic, and that may increase, but with digitization, which we'd expect would be the case, that may actually sort of fall off. There's an opportunity to grow the service through extended opening, I guess, because the building is going to be open seven days a week and beyond normal at more working hours. So that's an opportunity to grow the service for sure. But if we have, as a comparison, 350,000 visitors a year to the um, central library in the civic centre, that goes to show the extent of the range that we're looking, looking for in terms of making sure we keep it as a busy building. I want this building to be busy. I want people to see what's there. This will may lead to an increase in demand and access to, to your service because people will, will be where it's there. Similarly, with the likes of the Miners Library and the rest of it, it will increase activity, I'm sure, and visibility for lots of um, citizens of Saundis, Patalba and beyond. So I think there is, I just want to make sure you've got comfort in the fact we're not, and I've, and I've said previously to them, to this meeting, I think, we're not being devil may care and being um, not caring about the service and the needs of the service. We will meet the needs of the service, um, but you can see it's part of a much bigger picture in terms of a significant city centre development that will modernise our services and modernise um, the way we deliver those services to the, to the public. OK. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. That's uh, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Peter was next. Do you want to let Tracy come in first because she may answer okay. some of my questions first? Yeah. Yeah, by all means. Tracy, would you like to speak? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I put a comment in about whether or not we could arrange a separate briefing to to look at um, the sort of wider picture. And I, I still think I'd like the opportunity to do that. Mm. Um, I was also going to mention that, you know, about reading these plans in context, um, because, you know, you, you weren't necessarily able to do that today. And for a good reason, you know, Kim has focused on some technical detail, uh, but I am uh, I, I would just like to make some points, both library services and archive services come under my remit in terms of cultural services. Uh, there is, there's long been a desire to integrate local studies, family history more, and to make sure that uh, both access to library collections and all our collections can be facilitated digitally. The building overall, in terms of PC access, 
will be, as, as Jeff said, multi-use. Uh, so it isn't so much about saying, well, if you want to use libraries, you have to go over to this space. If you if within the archive, and if you're not specifically needing something from the search room, you would also be able to access digitized services from elsewhere in the building. Directly outside the archive, well, it leads into a wider library. And we've been gifted management of a, quite a significant community space. So school visits, groups, exhibitions, uh, pop-up activity uh, can take place there directly outside the search room. We also will manage a seminar room. So we'll be able to host events and screenings uh, again on the same floor. So I just want the sort of bigger picture to be um, to be better understood because th this building is going to be a significant part of city regeneration. It will draw investment and I will be making that case for increasing our opening hours. If the library's opening hours are, are far uh, more significant than archives currently, and that's because of pressures that we, Kim and I have had to withstand in terms of cuts, so we'd be looking to increase that. Um, I will also be looking at that sort of reporting. Kim was concerned about not being able to capture data in terms of usage of, uh, uh, of services and local history and family history. But again, you know, both those services come under my remit. I, I'm not clear on, on why we wouldn't be able to uh, have, have a full uh, account of everything that's taken place there. Um, the one thing that we do need to give better consideration to going forward is space to be uh, able to look at digitization. It is a request from uh, colleagues at Welsh Government that we give greater consideration to the move to digitized collections. And at this moment in time, we've, we've created space to manage the service as is, and we need to be thinking about longer term. And early August uh, is also a deadline for a leveling up bid. Um, we are looking at creating um, a case for a family history, a local history, a history centre uh, where, you know, further uh, development and expansion can take place as well. But this scheme as currently stands, as has been said by both my colleagues, is an, a solution to a, an issue we need to fix, which is that we are relocating out of the civic centre. Uh, ironically, uh, that, that building now sits in an area that would be uh, classed as a town 15 area and and flood risk and and you probably never put the archive in that building now um but this is a solution to to a problem that we uh, are addressing and of course in 25 years time i want my daughter to have the same access and greater access to these collections that our, our current generation do so again i stop there but i would welcome the opportunity for us to have a much more a fuller picture um of of where we are and where we may be going as well thank you and i'm really conscious that i've taken us well over time thank you <laughs> thank you very much tracy and thank you for the op offer of a separate briefing i'm sure the committee members would really welcome that so perhaps that could be organized through through gara thank you tracy uh peter yeah, a um, couple of things. First, just for information, the uh, Swansea Scrutiny Programme Committee will be looking at this in more depth in August anyway. So we'll have an opportunity to explore not just the archives, but the whole the whole building and how that's how that's uh, working and, and, and how how the project is being um, brought, taken forward. Um, to, first, a technical question. Um, I noticed in previous meetings um, the um, Kim has expressed some concerns about the security of, ta of taking larger documents from the um, strong room down to the search room. And I'm just wondering whether the document lift has resolved that problem or if there is still an issue in terms of of transporting documents which won't fit in the document lift to the to the search area. Um, is that been resolved? And the second question um, relates to the first paragraph of Kim's report on this. Uh, at what stage do we expect Neath Patarbuck Council to formally approve the, tr the transfer of its archives? Thank you. Certainly. Um, with regard to the oversized documents, so we expect that the majority of documents will be uh, able to fit in the lift, so that, that's fine. But what we will need to do is produce a protocol for transferring documents which don't fit in the lift and that that's primarily rolled maps um, so that we're not transporting documents through a public area where members of the public are using it. So this may, for example, be um, uh, the documents should be transferred to the archive area before 
the building opens in the morning and uh, that the archive area is kept locked. Uh, so a protocol will be drawn. And that's part of the conditions of grant. Um, so uh, if if we go back to the conditions of grant relating to the archive, um, they have, as far as I'm aware, all been met to the extent that we're able to um, to meet them at this stage. But the um, uh, including provision for um, wheelchair user access for use of oversized documents, uh, but the um, the issue of the um, transfer of oversized documents needs we need those plans. That's the next thing to work on, actually. So we've now got the floor plan, so we can we can draw a line on a floor plan to say this is the thing. And it's, it's pretty obvious the way uh, that via the stairs from the um, uh, to to the strong room. It's just the protocol of at what point will the documents be transferred but essentially you what you can't have is people carrying archives across a public area where you know there may be other customers use using other services within the building so uh, definite procedures will be need to be drawn up uh se second question from peter was about when neith but will sorry oh sorry Please yes speak. indeed um i don't uh this so uh, I don't know whether uh, Craig you would like to. <laughs> of course I can. Uh, of course. So thank you, Chair. I'm in answer to Councillor Black's question. We'll be taking a report to our members now after the summer recess in September, and I met with colleagues earlier on this week to request some outstanding information, obviously, which will enable me now to finalise that report to take it through our members. So following the conclusion of the summer recess, I'm anticipating early to mid September it will go before our members for consideration. Thank you, Craig. Before I bring in Lyndon, Jeff, I saw your hand went up. Were you wanting to add anything to what, what Kim it, was saying in response to Peter? It was a bit of additional information, really. It was related to Grant. I think it's important. I th I've, um, Craig and I, we had a conversation yesterday. There seems to be um, a suggestion this is a totally Welsh Government funded scheme. It's not. Um, there is Welsh Government funding um, for, the, um, uh, for the entire scheme, primarily for, through transforming uh, towns as part of the regeneration proposals. But the vast majority is probably about one third, two thirds. The vast majority is core capital funding from, um, from Swansea Council. I just want to make that clear, um, just in case people think um, it's, it's a totally Welsh Government funded scheme. I wish it was, but it's not. Thank, thank okay. you, Jeff. That's, uh, that's a helpful addition. Thank you. And Lyndon. Great, thank you, Chair. I think one of the points that uh, Jeff made was the fact that with the new site, uh, it, 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 it will have more visibility and I'm sure more people will then know the service exists because rather than be at the Civic Centre, it's going to be in the centre of Swansea and I'm sure more people will use it. One, one, one which, which is great news for, you know, because it's, uh, one, you know, I, I think it's a really important service. One of the big asks by the, of the committee was that, uh, you know, we get room for growth in the strong room. Uh, so that we can really grow the service. Um, and I don't know that that's possible by the sound of it. The other thing is the seating capacity going down from 36 to 14 is 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 a bit uh, worrying. Uh, I think uh, Tracy mentioned the fact that schools uh, could use another part of the building because I think it's vitally important to get people from school in, in to use the service. I did when I was that age and I got quite excited about it all, still am. And unless we give people and children that opportunity, then they're not going to feel that excitement about our local history. And I think that is absolutely important. Um, uh, so really concerned about the seating capacity and, uh, you know, really that we do need the service to grow because otherwise Kim is going to have to limit the amount of uh, of uh, of uh, product, uh, amount of uh, uh, goods and, and, and books and, and, and so on, things that come into the archive because we're just not going to have the space. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, sorry, I, I, yeah, I didn't cover that in the your first question. I have to remember that it's a two part question, so you'll have to uh, uh make sure that i answer both parts of the question the archive strong room has been uh designed and has been given enough space for 25 years expansion i should have mentioned that in the uh when i was showing that slide actually so that uh, uh that was part of the conditions of grant that it should be so we've estimated that the collection will the overall collection will grow by one percent 
per annum and uh, it's been calculated for 25 years and so there is 25 percent expansion space within the strong room and the you know space has not been an issue in the archive strong room area um, with regard to um, the public area and space I mean I take I absolutely take on board uh, Tracy's point that you know the archives and local studies are um, uh, united adjacently um, um, for the first time and uh, so I think the point that I want to make is that you, I know that men, members agonize over our statistics on an annual and quarterly basis. What we're saying is customers will still be able to access those services, whether it's family history or um, the clip owner. Uh, they may not feature in our statistics because they'll be using the local studies library instead of using the archives. So I don't think we can, uh, the, the services will still be available. It will just mean that the, the, the statistics for use of the archives will of necessity focus on those people who come to use original documents because the areas designed is essentially for the, the you know the right the statutory right of access that people have to certain documents and the the provisions of the um, uh, uh, various legislation for access to to records so the the area that's behind our front door is there for the provision of access to original archive material and some of the other functions that we we currently have, which namely a family history centre and providing things uh, transferred to other aspects of the building. So it won't be that citizens of Swansea and East Patalwood can't access those those services. It, um, my major point really is that the statistics for use of the service will of necessity drop drop down because those customers will be using facilities in the local studies library rather than in the archives. Uh, now, the issue with schools, uh, Tracy mentioned the um, the education area. I think a, a little bit more thought needs to be gone through how we can continue to access, um, uh, uh, sorry, provide access to to schools and school groups because, as you can see, the archive search room isn't big enough for a school class to go in. So. Before COVID, what we had is a, uh, 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 quite a popular service where schools would come in a whole classroom and they would get to handle original documents. They're going to look at the strong room and so on. So we're going to have to do some serious thinking about how we can provide services to schools going forward. Um, I mean, one of the things I could mention that has surfaced as, uh, during the uh, pandemic is provision remotely to schools, which in particular is of benefit to those more outlying schools across um, the furthest reaches of city and county of Swansea and indeed Neath Patalbert, in that we can provide a um, uh, remote uh, uh, learning sessions via a whiteboard. And um, that's that's been quite popular. So I think what the point that I'll make is that we need to we'll need to restructure the education provision and we'll also need to talk to um, the local studies library about you know ways in which we could could work together on that because there are local studies resources that could also be relevant to to schools so I think more thought needs to be um, uh, undertaken to that. Uh, I mean, I don't want to give the wrong impression from the presentation that I've given that I, I am probably a glass half empty person, but I hope what I've made clear in the presentation is that the key decisions, which is essentially the second part of the presentation, which is about the um, the storage of the collections, we are at Reba stage four. And what I'm outlining to members is that more discussions and thought needs to be given to the proper storage of the collections because the you know my primary concern and indeed the primary concern of this committee should be the long-term 
um, preservation of the archive collections for future generations. It's one thing to offer a public service and to offer many of the exciting things that we do, whether it's services to schools and so on. But if we are in the process of doing that, damaging the archive collections, then we will not be thanked by future generations for how we looked after them. And this is you know, the Carmarthenshire experience, uh, you know, Carmarthenshire obviously on our doorstep ne next door. And I think all members of the this committee are probably aware of what happened in Carmarthenshire through inappropriate storage of the collections and indeed the huge cost of remediation work that were was undertaken through um, inappropriate storage environment, uh, which I understand was understand was in the region of half a million somewhere around about that so you know that was um uh, a lesson for us all and it was right on our doorstep so i think what i'm saying is that we need to uh make sure that these issues that it meets the standard that it meets the criteria set um in bs 4971 it will also mean that we achieve, uh, we achieve accreditation because one of the things about accreditation, our accreditation has expired, uh, but we are provisionally accredited until such time as we move to the new um, uh, facility, and then we'll have to reapply on the basis of the new facility. And they, we've already been told by the panel that will be based on the first six months of six months of temperature and humidity readings. So this has got to work as an archive strong room, and um, we really do need to. Uh, you know, we are at the stage Reaper stage four where these these issues can be uh, battered about with fresh modelling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Jeff. I was going to come in very quickly, but I think to be fair, Kim covered most of the points anyway. Effectively, you know, we're we're at the sort of final stages in terms of the real detail when it comes to um, technical design and additional modelling. So um, again, there's nothing up to this point that's causing huge concerns, or albeit the fact that Kim has, has, has expressed his own concerns. But we'll um, we're not concerned in terms of making sure we're meeting those demands. But it comes down to the actual physical ability to. Um, to, to meet those demands when the thing's actually built. Um, passive technology is notoriously difficult in terms of air tightness, but it's 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 developing technology. So hopefully with that much further along, it it should be less of a problem. Um, just to very quickly pick up on Councillor Jones's point about um, the capacity, I would come back to a point I made earlier on. This I don't know quite what the coming opening hours for um, um, for the collection are, but you know we have the ability to extend that. But that comes at a cost to both Swansea and East Patel, but Albert. So that's a resource implication that you may want to consider because the building will be there you'll have plenty of um chairs and tables and uh and and secure areas but have you got the ability to staff it uh which is a different question i, I would suggest not a property question but um just that was just my point on that one yeah thank you okay. thank you thank you very much jeff i think next was Elliot and then peter yeah th thank you chair um I, I don't want to repeat a lot of what's been said already i, I think um I think the important thing to remember is that the, the plans on black and white on the paper tell one one side of the story, but there's there's still a lot to be worked out, I think, in terms of how how the building will be used, how the spaces will be used and, and what the sort of you know flow and, and things like that. And I think when it comes to you know the concerns around school visits and other things, I think it'll it'll come down to how, how we use the spaces in the building. I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for work around that. And the space which why I think um, I think Tracy's suggestion of having a separate briefing to look at the whole plans and look at the context, I think is really important for the committee to to get that bigger picture of how it all fits in into the building and all fits in together. Uh, I think that will really help with some of the context uh, there as well. Um, and that, that's just all I wanted to add. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Elias. And Peter, finally. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to follow up on um, something which both Tracy and Jeff have said now in terms of the building being open seven days and this offering um, scope, if you like, to expand the, the archives um, experience. Um, obviously, that does, as Jeff says, that does require budget. I mean, is it the intention of the two authorities to increase the budgets of the archive service to actually enable that expanded service over a seven day period? Perhaps I should pick that up, actually, um, Councillor, because um, one of the things about this smaller area for the 
archive thing is that it, it only requires two members of staff to staff it. So it's actually more, you know, you reduce the the size of the public area and it it, it involves fewer staff. So we're going to need to carry out some form of um, assessment of uh, going forward how how that's how that's staffed and so on. So those sorts of considerations are probably a little bit further down the line in terms of what what it needs. But um, it, it is. I, I mean, I, I think I probably use this phrase small, but perfectly formed. Um, what what I have done and worked with um, the Welsh Government on this is made sure that the the public area meets the security criteria that um, uh, required for our continuing accreditation. You know, it's one thing to um, uh, um, uh, to to design an area uh, for public use, but if it's not going to meet those standards, which are key to our accreditation, so th there will be fewer staff required. However, it has been designed so that it still will still be secure and I think going forward we'll need to to work out what the implications are for um, opening hours and uh, and obviously we've got commitments in Neath as well uh, as uh, in Swansea. Uh, defer to Tracy on that. Yeah, Tracy. Thank you yes just very quickly uh, Councillor Black you'll be aware that we can't make future commitments on budgets uh, but what we can do is look at better use of all our resources uh, we are in the process of recruiting, for example, um, a coordinator to manage that community space. So, you know, for me, as the head of the service, it's also about trying to create some more matrix uh, ways of working between various teams who currently are, are in separate buildings or in separate spaces re requiring their dedicated staff. So that detail. I won't commit us to put more money into the service and I certainly wouldn't for Neath Talbot, but I do think this uh, project offers us an opportunity over the, the, the coming years to share resources, to share uh, skills and uh, to get people from one part of cultural services more actively involved in increasing um, use of things like the archives. So watch this space, I would say. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Well, th well thank you. Uh, that was a really uh, good and comprehensive uh, discussion about this very important issue. It has gone on uh, quite some time, but I think uh, it has been very valuable and I think particularly for the new members as, as well. And that separate briefing session will also be uh, very welcome too. Uh, so, so thank you very much. If there's no further questions or observations on that item, Kim, would you like to quickly uh, well, I think, finish with the with the two, two or three? Well, well I think with items. five, six, and seven, I'll probably just uh, members may wish to know yeah. sections five, six, and seven on the report. Um, uh, I, I think probably it's, it's a good. Uh, there will be a separate meeting, and I think uh, members will be able to. Uh, 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 raise issues, any further issues that they may have. Yeah, OK. Uh, thank, thank, thank you all very much. That brings the, the meeting to a conclusion. The next meeting is on Friday, the 16th of September at 10 o'clock. Uh, very valuable and a very, very good meeting. Thank you all very much for your uh, contributions, constructive comments. I think we've had some good news on the agenda. Good news that the Mechanics Institute has, has now reopened in, in Neath and looking forward to the clip corner. Great to see that we are one of the first in Wales. Um, in the vanguard of that and uh, adds to our reputation as, as a progressive and innovative archive service, I think. And uh, I do urge new members to have that tour of the archives. There are some real gems in the collection and I'm sure you would find it extremely interesting. So do please um, take advantage of, of having that tour. And once again, I think the, the uh, discussion the, uh, on the new archives um, uh, location was was really helpful and insightful for for everybody so thank you all very much indeed and uh, thanks once again to Kim and to your staff for the uh, great service that the archive staff do provide to us and I wish you all a, a very happy summer and we'll meet again in September if not before for the for the briefing so thank you all very much indeed
Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.